Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show where we talk about all things essence and we gather around the campfire together and we share our stories of connection to that which is bigger than us, our stories of mystical moments or connections to the divine or synchronistic uh, opportunities and things that just you boggle the mind. You can't even believe it. And then yet here it is. And I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird. I, I love this journey, the sacred journey of the divine. I love walking the beauty way. I love all things uh, that bring me closer to an understanding of the divine in terms of my presence here on earth and what we're all doing here together. And I love having spiritual conversations. I really appreciate you joining us week after week. And, you know, many of you have left reviews on iTunes and I just so appreciate that. Thank you so much for doing that. It helps more people to find these interviews. And I know that we tend to have out far out discussions on this podcast that don't happen in a lot of other places. So people that like those kind of far out discussions, this is the place. So Today, I have another amazing person on the show. Actually, just from my heart, I just oh, so grateful for this woman and what she does and what she brings to the world because it actually helped me to put the pieces and the dots together for my own journey, which was a big deal for me. Um, as you guys know, I just published the second wave, and uh, you know, and and leading up to the publishing of this book, you know, I just kind of had this vague sense of like, oh, I'm being guided, you know, by my guides, you know, whatever that is. And it, it was it was like, okay, well, just, you know, just say it's the great spirit. It's fine. And so I'm going along and I'm like, okay, well, but I don't really know, you know, I know other people that channel, they have specific guides that they talk to and they know their names. And I just never got that far exactly. And because of Catherine Skaggs and because of the work that she does, and she um, had this, I finally went and was uh, inspired to go take a look at her full website because I'd seen the work that she'd done for some of my friends who have soul portraits by her. She's, yeah, she does soul por portraits and artwork. It's amazing. And I look up on there and what do I find is a portrait of White Eagle. And I'm like, that's the guy that's been talking to me. <laughs> that's the one. He's, uh, that's the guy I see in my mind when I close my eyes and I'm speaking. And it was so many, over the last eight years, I've had this person, this like, this semblance speaking to me. I'm like, that's the, <sighs> okay, now I can relax. I know who it is. So, and it was amazing. So more about that later. But I want to say that it's because of Catherine that I was able to finally make that connection because I saw the picture and I'm like, that's exactly who, that's his nature. That's everything about him. So I can also speak to just the accuracy of the work. So because of my personal experience there. So yes, Catherine Skaggs is on the show today. She is so many things. It's, you can't even put it in a nutshell. She is a visionary artist, an intuitive, an author, teacher, spiritual counselor, shamanic practitioner, entrepreneur, and a painter of souls. And she has done a lot of things that are amazing. You guys got to check out her artwork at katherineskaggs.com because you're going to find something up there that speaks to your soul. I know you are. And uh, also the artist of the mythical goddess uh, tarot deck, if you've seen that out there in the world uh, and, you, and you've seen, hey, that mythical goddess tarot deck, I really like that artwork. Well, that is Catherine Skaggs. So she's so much more than that and we're not going to pigeonhole her in anything because I don't think she can be anyway. Welcome, Catherine. Welcome to the show. Carrie, thank you. What a great introduction you gave me. I just adore you. This is awesome. I am so grateful to be here with you and everyone. I am so grateful. This is, you know, you've been doing this work for quite a while. And so in, in some ways, I know that also means that you've been having incredible mystical moments of knowing for a really long time now, because you had told me before the show that you actually began this work when you were in your 20s you started practicing mystery school teachings. And, and I know you because you and I have shared um, some training through the power path through Jose and Lena Stevens. We've shared that lineage and that training. But you've, you've done so much. Like, I'm not even sure we could put it in a nutshell, like I said. But tell us a little bit about the beginnings of your journey and, and you know, whatever you're called to share with us about how you've evolved into where you are today with what you're doing with your life. Well, it's kind of interesting because as all of us have, we've got these wild beginning experiences, at least in my world. And part of my wild beginning experience was I grew up in Oklahoma in a very uh, conservative experience. And 
I always felt like the kid who was sensitive and nobody got. Like, my animals were my saviors. The people didn't make any sense. And the religion that I had didn't make any sense either because it was very limiting and very judgmental, and I was surely going to go to hell because I wasn't going to fit in, right? So in my 20s, I think my spiritual path began probably just to save myself from self-destruction because it was just such a negative, difficult, challenging piece. And the more I know about mysticism and shamanism and everything else is that it was a task I gave my soul. I'm going to say that over again. It was a task I gave my soul that I chose my circumstances, as we all do, on a soul level. So I would wake up and find my way. And so something inside me led me to a mystery school in my 20s after going through an eating disorder and some really difficult things emotionally, mentally, spiritually, that this mystery school made sense. I had already started reading about metaphysics in my mid-20s, and I was so curious. It made so much sense in past lives and intuition and dreams. And I, I went to a, a, a psychic fair at this little mystery school in Oklahoma City on this, in this tiny house. And so I walked in hungover, because I learned <laughs> a lot back then. And I had my hands up and my arms up, and I was like, I don't know these people, so I'm going to check it out, right? So I was probably as green as the building was painted outside. And I walked in, and they had readers there. They had psychics. They had... Uh, different talks going on. And I thought I'd, I was meeting a friend there. I thought I'd stay like 15 minutes and I stayed all day. And I met a woman who was doing crystal ball readings. I thought that sounds very interesting. And this was in the eighties. So yeah, that kind of ages me a bit. I'm probably way before you were born. I don't know, but I don't even know where you are there. So anyhow, <laughs> I, I stayed and I got this reading and this gal nailed me with my life at the time. And I was, I had gone to art school in my mid twenties. I've been an artist since I can remember. But you know, I got that imprint early on that says, uh, what are you really gonna do with your life? And so I had an interest in uh, health and well being. I had an interest in physiology and science. And so I actually got a degree there in my early twenties. But then later I went back in my mid twenties and got a fine art degree in painting. Well, I was coming off of that as I went into this reading and I was working in, cor in a corporate America financial situation because I was tired of like bartending and painting and trying to figure out how to do this thing because I had no idea in my 20s how to do it. And I ended up, you know, like sacrificing myself for money at the time. And I, I was doing all right because I was following these universal laws and truths. So I'm in this financial world and I'm like the top rookie. And a lot of it had to do as I was following these principles spiritually about how things work in the universe. And so I was, I was manifesting stuff right and left. And everybody's looking at me like, where did that rookie come from? So anyway, fast forward to that reading. I didn't tell this woman anything. And she looked in a crystal ball and she told me things such as you, you're very creative. You're not doing what you really want. And I, my eyes got really big. I thought, how the hell did she know that? Excuse me, but I'm a little irreverent at this point in my life. Oh, no, it's uh, fine. That happens all yeah. the time on this show. <laughs> I kind of figured as much. <laughs> anyway, that was the beginning of me getting in classes when I said I didn't have enough time. And I got in and the magic really started to happen because I got into deeper studies, concentration, meditation, mystery school exercises to move into the subconscious, to understand that, to have experience with it. So that became my platform for everything that's unfolded. And it started to awaken the gifts within me, my intuition. And I remember this gal who did my reading, she became a very good friend of mine, Denise Rogers. And that she, she looked at me and she said, you know what, you can do this too. And I said, no, I can't. What are you talking about? I said, I can't do this. She said, yes, you can. She said, it's innate to each one of us. You just need to have some exercises to do to help you remember and how to open your gifts up. And that was the beginning of many mystical experiences beginning to unfold that I started to notice and have awarenesses of. 
So that was the beginning. I became a teacher pretty quickly and then a director of schools. Then I spent a year uh, at their college. And then they sent me to Fort Collins to run a little bitty school here where I live now in Colorado. And, you know, I had, I had some things going on at the time where authority just, there was some things happening in the school that, you know, humans run things. So we've got, we got personalities and we got stuff that comes up and it just seemed like uh, there were some things that I didn't agree with that were, uh, it was difficult. As much as I loved the people and I loved uh, what I was learning and what I was teaching. So I was a little disturbed about that, and I went, I had a student I'd gotten, and uh, I'd heard she did shamanic journeying and soul retrieval, and I thought, what's that? That sounds really interesting. And she, she's not at all trained like what you and I have trained with. She, I think this was one of the things that she just remembered. She's actually a realtor, of all things. But I went <laughs> to her house, and I, I, she didn't feed me any weird tea or anything like that. <laughs> I was not on psychedelics at the time. And so I ended up um, laying down on this bed, and it seemed like a, soul, a past life uh, experience to do a past life journey. But I'll tell you one thing. I had one of the most mystical experiences, and I'm not sure. I could say, why was that? Was that because I'd learned to meditate, and I was really intense into it for years? It was just the right time, the right experience, and she helped me facilitate. I, I opened my eyes in this meditation, like inwardly, not physical eyes open. And I remember she said, go down a hallway. I'm like, okay. I saw it as clearly as me seeing you right now, which was like nothing like the meditations I'd ever had. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And I opened the door. And as I opened the door to one of the, that were on the hallway, I saw a garden with this little fairy angel in it. And I thought, oh my gosh, how cool is that? And I had a thought, I would love to hug her. And when I had that thought, I shrank in size and I hugged her and I burst into light. Wow. And the whole room went away. My physical dimension here went away. And I was in what I, at my language at the time was the inner levels of consciousness, particularly the um, super conscious mind, God consciousness. I was in pure white light, and I remember that there were two, uh, two consciousnesses there besides me, and there were no physical emanations of anything, but I was aware there was wisdom, consciousness present, and like another being. And I remember how I was struggling with some things at the time, and I, I didn't have any questions once I was in that state, I had no questions. It was just pure bliss. And it was pure, pure omniscient energy. And it was love and it was kindness and it was just all knowing. And it, I called it my mind orgasm for years. It was just like <laughs> incredible. And in earth time, I must have had four hours pass, but there was no time where I was. And pretty soon I felt an inkling that I, I felt something pull me back to my body in that room. And I looked at my watch and I thought, oh my gosh, I got to go. Because I had to teach that night. And I, I drove out of there. And as I'm driving back to the school to teach, I saw neon auras everywhere I was. Everything had a neon aura. The cars, the trees, everything. My students that night, I don't know how I taught. because I, And I saw that for three days. Wow. Um, so it always, unleashed. It, it, something broke open. It was just perfect uh, synchronicity of events. The, the main thing of, is, yeah, what a cool experience. What a mystical experience. But the main thing that came out of that is I left the school at the time. I had clarity. It, and it was without struggle because I knew that the only answer was love. And it was a vibration. And it changed the directory of my life, the direction of my life at the time. For me to, I mean, it, and I've come back to that over and over and over if I feel like I'm losing my way, is that has imprinted in me that that's my GPS, that's our GPS for all of us, that's our true north, is that energy, that vibration, and that's really led me to my shamanic path, was I needed to return to love after I had a relationship fall apart and my heart was broken. 
And it's like there's been a force of energy constantly guiding me that I've had the capacity to touch this life. That I've, I've had I've, all these mystical experiences that I'm actually going to start writing a book on later this fall. And I'm excited about it because it's there for all of us. It's in the quantum field. And sometimes we just need a little stimulation to reach for it. And um, so I don't know, I'm kind of talking a lot. So uh, where no, would that you was, like to go with this? Gosh, you know, I could go so many places with this. I think the first place I want to go with it, though, is the, just the significance of the fact that you were on a shamanic drum journey, having an experience, a shamanic journey, having an experience, and you were able to get there to that transcendental experience. And there were not any drugs. And I want to say that because I really, even though I totally appreciate plant medicine, I find it very powerful. Um, I, want to, I want people to realize that, they, that we don't need to, pe to be dependent on anything outside of ourselves to get there. That Absolutely. actually we can get there. And if your current method of meditation or whatever isn't working, I actually, as you were talking, I was thinking to myself, gosh, you know, because... I wonder if this shamanic drum journey thing or this shamanic journey thing, like I wonder if once you make the conscious decision, I'm going to go down, I'm going to open myself to this potential. If that, just that choice alone isn't the thing that opens up all of these mystical experiences. That's what I'm curious about because that's, that's the path that I've been on that's unlocked all this for me, you know, is, is getting into this shamanic journey state. You know, it's interesting when I think back to my orientation at the time, um, I, had, I had this really uh, disciplined path of meditation. And I'd had it for three to four years at that point in time. And it was seriously like, it started out with a 10 minute concentration exercise. And then after two weeks, we added another 10 minute exercise. And I was one of the most disciplined people ever. I just remember when my brother back then said, you're so religious. And I thought, oh, don't call me that. Because I had an aversion to religion at that point. <laughs> and he was just trying to say, you're so disciplined. But there was something I really connected to in this mirror exercise and this candle exercise. And then we got into um, all these other deep mystical teachings. And, but it wasn't philo just philosophical. And I think that's one of the things is how do you focus your mind? What do you focus on? How do you train it so that you're not wandering off in everything that's around you and you're never able to be still? Hmm. And, and when I get disturbed in my field, let's say I go on some adventure that I'm and I've got a ton of different people around me and I may or may not be connecting with them, my mantra is know thyself and be true to thyself. Hmm. Instead of thinking, oh, somebody's bugging the crap out of me. <laughs> you know, I have to take 100% ownership. Like you say, your curiosity, my curiosity somehow got me to this. I had a mystical experience. I wasn't even looking for something. I was just curious. And I dropped into this thing that was like this gift. Because I've asked my guides, can't I do that again? Can And... I even had a surgery many moons ago and I was out. I remember it was before I got on the shamanic path. And that I remember totally thinking, oh, gosh, you know, when they put me under, I hope I can go there again. I didn't remember anything in that experience. But what my guides have, have told me that I trust implicitly at this point, my higher self, my guides, my guidance system, is that that was a gift. And it's like, don't be obsessive about trying to go over and over and over. How do I bring that into my everyday experience? How do I bring the transcendental, that God-like experience, God is divine, whatever your language is. How do I become more and more masterful about being in my heart and love every day in the most ordinary of circumstances? How do I take ownership? How do I practice that? How do I let go? of those difficult energies and judgments and separation. Because ultimately what this comes back to is oneness. And it sounds oh so wonderful and all that, but it's like what, what one experience can help you know that you feel connected to another human being? Yeah, that innocence, that like, 
every every single time I've had a really amazing mystical experience, I have not been expecting that it would happen. That for me is the key. Like I I never expected it's going to happen. It just it's always caught me by surprise. Like the first time that I saw a white eagle, but I didn't realize it was white eagle, right? I was in the tub and I had been exposing myself to shamanic journey, but at this moment I was just in the tub and I was just relaxing and I had just finished a recapitulation exercise. I was practicing Toltec recapitulation. And then I, I had blown my energy towards my destination and I was just kind of sitting back like, wow, that was really cool. You know, I did this practice. And then I closed my eyes and I saw this periscope. Like, it was really weird. This periscope came closer and closer and closer until I was looking through this periscope and then through the other end came this Indian chief head, like looking at me and he comes all the way up in front of me. And then he says, open the sun in their hearts. And then he leaves. <laughs> like, wait, you can't just leave. Like, I, first of all, I wasn't expecting that to happen. Second of all, who are you? Third of all, what does that mean? And then and that was it. And it was gone. And I'm, I was like, wow. And so I looked up on the internet, you know, who is, what kind of, anyway, so I started make, trying to make it into my reality when I was experiencing things at that time, trying to reconnect with my Cherokee ancestry. So anyway, those moments now I look back and I go, oh, you actually, like White Eagle was actually reaching out to me at this moment of like penetration of my egoic self-consciousness to grab my attention with something that powerfully enough that I would want to find out what that meant or pursue it. And then it's not like it happened again, you know, and I actually didn't get a face to face. I mean, I've had lots of moments with this white eagle that I didn't realize I was having, but this last weekend when I did this plant medicine, now that did get me back there. So I, I do feel like there's a place for plant medicine, but it's a tool. It's not a crutch. And I think that's really what I wanted to say about it is that we can, get, we can get there in unexpected ways. We don't even know it's going to happen. Bam, there's the moment. Now, what do you do with that moment? How do you, how do you, how do you take that energy that, that, that higher consciousness expended to, to reach you through the thickness of your density, you know, <laughs> and then do something beautiful with it? Don't lose that. Absolutely. You know, it's, um, it's there to open us up. To, it's a bridge. And, but it's within us, You're right? You know, we are, we are it. Nothing is outside of us. We may give ourselves little clues and bridges along the way, but everything is within us. And so if you get there through meditation or, and, you know, if you're doing something ritualistically and it's not working, then I say try something new, right? Like shake it up. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I've, I had that training and then I own a metaphysical store. And during that time, uh, a lot of magic happened in that too. And yet as an artist, I didn't put my work out there for a long time, which cracks me up. I had the perfect venue. I had Alex Gray, Susan Seaton Belay's images, mine right Craighead. And I sold, you know, calendars and books and different things. But my stuff was at home. And I was wondering, how do I become a visionary artist? And, you know, I had, I had the training over here and I was trying to figure out how to blend it all. And one day I, you know, this is like how to get there is to me is constant prayer. Hmm. And that is the mindfulness of a monk or a mystic because you're constantly in conversation with the divine. And it doesn't mean you're talking all the time. You're in, in receptive mode too. So during that time, I want to weave this into what you're talking about, like how to really open to be in that conversation all the time. So one is your intention and being present because then you notice stuff, right? Yeah. And that's one thing plant medicine does. It brings you into a really intense opening and focus. So anyway, there's way before that for me back then. And I am praying like, how does my artwork and my spiritual path come together? I don't know. I think Alex Gray's stuff is kind of really familiar. I think I'm supposed to do something like that. You know, and Susan C. Belay, if you don't know her, look her up. She's an amazing artist. And it just really was inspired. So I began contemplating it. Well, I don't hear anything. 
I don't get an answer. So I kind of forget about it. So about a year passes and I'm in the store one day right in the middle of the store and I'm teaching intuitive stuff back then, but I'm not going to sit as a psychic. Oh, no, no, no. That kind of scares me. I don't want to be responsible for telling anybody anything. I had nine psychics who worked for me at once. That was kind of chaotic and crazy. So anyway, I ended up one day in the store. I'm just doing something in there. And inwardly, I hear as loud as you talking to me, soul portraits. And I knew exactly what it meant. And I thought, oh, shit. Because I knew... I knew that I had to talk as well as in channel through words as well as imagery. And my job was to see the truth of who someone was beyond their personality, oh. to reflect their soul self. And that weaves into that journey of awakening. It's like, it's, it's my service, it's my gift, it's how do those come to the world? And it can come in so many ways. But it, you know, then it took a while for it to all unfold, but it's so right there if we'll be curious about it. Yeah, and there's never any missed steps. Like a lot of times I talk to people and they um, they might feel like the conversation of purpose gets them all bunged up. Like, well, I don't know what my purpose is or I'm not really sure what I'm ultimately supposed to do or, you know, and they get kind of like stuck at that spot. And and they're like, well, I'm doing this, but I'm not really sure it's supposed to, it's, it's, it's accurate. And I'm like, well, but how did you get to do that thing? Like, let's just, it, who cares what it is? How did you get to do that thing? Oh, well, I was guided, you know, I made a connection and I was guided and I just fell into this job. I'm like, well, then there's something there. I mean, because I don't, there are no mistakes. I've just learned that every single thing connects with every other thing in your life. And even if you argue with it and you say, well, I don't really like this job, like me as a technical writer, I was a technical writer for 20 years, Catherine. I, I don't belong doing that, but I did it. And what did it teach me? Well, it taught me how to um, take difficult concepts that were like Greek to other people and make words that described it made it make sense. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, you're an interpreter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, isn't that cool when you start seeing the layers? You know, I wondered that too when I started my story. I thought, why did I go to art school? And then why did I go into finance? And why did I do all these weird things, you know? And then where I am today, you know, 30 years later, I'm like, oh, the weaving is so perfect. Because you needed all those skills, like the financial part. As an artist, how beneficial is your knowledge of finance for your art career? Well, it's pretty good. You know, I, I, I incarnated into a family of entrepreneurs, for one. So I've kind of got that nature naturally by the DNA I chose in this world. And the, not that my father ever taught me anything about it. It was just I, I had something inside me. You know, and, and the finance piece all made sense. And I'm real right brain, left brain. But it, yeah, it all wove together. It all put all the parts and pieces together for me to be here now and for me, everything to flow. So, okay. So now this is a different kind of question. So now you, I know that I can't see my own eyebrows, right? Like, in the, I look in the mirror. That's the only way. <laughs> Let's try. About. <laughs> right. So that's like a good metaphor for the spiritual journey. Like it's hard for us to see ourselves. How do you like, how do you do your own soul portrait? Have you done your own soul, soul portrait? Yes, I have. I uh, actually very interesting. When I got guidance, I started, I'm going to say fiddling around with it. I was experimenting. I had friends come. I was very shy about doing it as lack of confidence. I was, I was afraid I'd screw it up, which told you a little bit about my personality at the time. <laughs> and yeah. I actually it went through a process to get to uh, where I am now. And, and part of it is, um, I just want to share a really important piece is I went through a real big dark night of the soul after I heard that. So that was 94. I was messing around with it. 97, over the next couple of years, I worked so hard Mars and Capricorn, if anybody's got that, be, balance is one of your big lessons this life. That's <laughs> one of mine. 
And so I got really sick and I closed my store and I basically lost everything. Hmm. And I, I quit painting for five years. Wow. And I got back, I went and worked in corporate for a couple of years, which I thought, what is this about? This is too weird. I was a graphic designer. I had that under my belt. I got all that up to date. And I got back on my feet and had an opportunity to open a second store, which kind of scared the crap out of me, to be very honest. But I had a business partner, left corporate, took my money, put it in the store. And as I did, my friend had a really good artist friend, Shiloh. Sophia, she's an amazing artist out of California, and a goddess, priestess, various big stuff I, I was attracted to. And she came and she saw some of my older pieces, and she said, is that yours? I said, yeah. She said, are you painting now? I think, what an interesting question to ask me after seeing my work. I don't know if she read the date or she just was intuitive as I'll get out. I said, actually, I've had a hard time. I've had a studio for the last five years, but I never go in it. I just can't make myself sit. She said, I came for you. That's why I'm here. And she said, I'm, we're going to go do a meditation, and then you're going to start painting again. So I had, a, I had a basement that was finished. We went downstairs in the basement. She did a medit five, ten-minute meditation. Then we went up to my studio on the second floor, and she said, get the biggest canvas, because I had everything. So I pulled my canvas out, three foot by four foot. And she had these little golden acrylic paints, which I used to hate acrylic, but these are fluid acrylics, I, really cool colors. She got a palette, she squeezed them out, she stuck a brush in it, she said, here, paint. And I was like, okay. And I just started, this goddess started coming out. And she said, wow, you're really confident. I said, I've always been a painter. I just haven't painted for five years, mm. but it like broke the dam open. And so I had this gift of this person who came for one reason, who was here for me. Mm -hmm. And that happens all the time when we need it, even when we're not even sure why, or that we called it. Some part of me was calling that in, even if it wasn't conscious. So that's another thing is our inner selves, our subconscious, our divine being has a plan for us. And unless we're just going to, ignore the crap out of it somehow it's going to keep unfolding just one more breath one more step it's going to keep happening and that's what's like wow you know i started to flood canvases with divine feminine images madonna and child and i was healing this part of me that had separated from my divine feminine self it was just it had to come out of me and it's just everything started to flow. So many different things started to happen. My friend Sage Holloway came back into my world after not seeing her for five years. She had said to me in 90, when she'd seen some of my artwork that had nothing like it is now, she said, you know, I've been writing a tarot deck since I was 17. I've been studying it since I was 14. This is about the divine feminine overlay in the tarot and a shift upwards in consciousness. I think you're the artist. I was 91, actually, and I thought, oh, okay. Go on with our lives, never talk about it. We ran into each other again in 2003, right after I started painting, and she says, we got to do that. Well, the, the mysticism of how everything unfolded kept going because in 2006, I went to Rome to see it through the eyes of the goddess, with Lydia Rule and Meinrad Craig had these two mystical 70-year-old divine feminine artists, and we got to look pre-Christianity at the, at the divine feminine and everything about that. And I came home from that. One of the things Lydia said that I always love to share is that we've heard history, his story. Uh -huh. It's time to tell her story, her story. Yes. And she said, just do it. So I came home after this amazing experience and I called Sage. I said, I finally got the message. And between 2006, the summer of 2006 and October 2008, I painted 78 goddesses or pictures for this tarot deck, 78 cards plus the back. And I put it all together and published it. And it's been the, when the top 25 selling decks that are distributed for the last 10 years. And the cool thing is I've just found out recently it's, it was number four. 
That's and awesome. Really, yeah, I'm like, it just, you know, it's like, wow, that changed my life because I said yes here and I said yes here and I said yes here. You know, okay, so when you just said all that uh, about how this person came through a synchronicity but then really came for you also, I realized that you are also that for me. <laughs> And I made me cry, <laughs> so I was trying to hold it together, but yeah. We're all connected, you know. Yeah, when totally. We, when we get into metaphysical teaching, shamanism, it says there's a web of life and we're all connected. Well, this is just the perfect reflection of that. It's the web of life. You know, eight years ago, I left my, I, my studio because I left my former husband because I needed to change. Mm -hmm. And the thing that broke my heart the most, and this is really awful people, I think, but to be honest, is leaving my studio. It was your sanctuary. It was. It was my space. And I, I am opening to, like, I have a painting I started uh, three years ago with a butterfly, and it's still down there on the canvas. <laughs> still there. And I, I guess I just haven't. There's just been so, you know, like life takes you in these directions and I've had so much like soul work to do, like real big soul work that there hasn't been spaciousness, but I can feel this like opening, like, oh, these things are coming back in and oh, it's not done. Like I might paint again, you know, and that kind of feeling is starting to come in and it's really exciting. Well, I want to honor you for what you've done to take care of yourself because yeah, definitely. I'm getting older, more wrinkles and, and crown wisdom here, you know, which is like uh, exciting and sometimes strange. And, you know, one of the things that uh, my art has taught me in this process has taught me is everything that comes at the right time. Mm -hmm. And if you think you've missed something, it, that cycle's going to come back. It's okay. You know, everything from Sage in 1991 telling me we need to do this deck, and I wasn't cooked yet. I wasn't ready. I wasn't cooked. And I'm like, I got cooked. And then it happened. You know, and I suppose she might have been getting cooked too. And humanity might have been getting cooked. Yeah. But actually, the cool thing is it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. You know, it seems like I burst it 10 years ago, but it keeps happening. And, you know, everything comes at the right time. And so as we take care of ourselves and keep showing up, that energy, it allows us to at just the right time to say yes and say, oh, I feel it now. Now's the time. You can't, I, one thing I tell my students and my clients, you cannot mess this thing up. <laughs> you can't screw it up. You can't mess it up. Yeah. Your soul is eternal. This is finite. This is a finite dream. And it's like, wow, what's it like to just have the most fun, amazing life? You know, when I started to understand that uh, curiosity and creativity are what birth everything in our world and how to ask the proper questions. Cause I think I used to ask the way I was imprinted earlier is, Oh shit, how bad can this be? Oh, you know, that's, that's not that's a good humanity, right? Yeah. I've asked that question a lot. Like how, how bad can it get? Oh, that's not, yeah, I don't I mean, want to ask that question. Yeah. So, you know, to flip that coin over, it's like, I, I often say I'm the cosmic cheerleader is, you know, Oh, at least the face I like to, to the world, I'm, I'm not, you know, but I work on it. It's like, well, oh my gosh, how amazing can this be? What if this is grace filled and, and what if it's, it's ease? What if it got effortless? What if this was so fun? I never paid attention to time in that linear fashion, but I'm exactly in the center of everything I need to be in. What if that is the joy I got to start living? And that it's not out here. It's right here. It's right here. It's right here. And it's right inside. And it's in the inner decisions, you know, to follow the inspirations rather than ignore them, you know, to, to open through the contraction. I, I, you know, there's a lot of contraction that can happen because our minds are conditioned to contract and protect and be smaller. Mm -hmm. But none of these, like this gorgeousness behind you that I'm looking at through this whole interview, you know, like this didn't happen through contraction. This happened through a decision you were telling me, you know, to, to go to work with tobacco. I mean, that's, 
that's not a contraction. That's like a yes. You know, know, I had been uh, in our shamanic training, which it sounds like you've talked a lot about. uh, I knew that in my program, we were going to go to the jungle. And we were going to do work with the Shipibo. And it was in Europa, so it's outside of Iquitos and to, down the river to Europa. So it takes two days to get to from Lima. And we had some experiences in Pacopa and all that. But this is, I, I, this is before I'd ever gone. I knew we were getting ready for the trip. And they had an add-on trip to go do the first plant tobacco with the Shipibo in, uh, near Pacopa. Right? I said Iquitos, Pacopa. I got to mix it up early. Anyway, where our our tribe is, right? So I thought, well, that would be efficient. Go to do one and do the other. Well, I was praying on this vision quest with tobacco and it says, you're not ready. I'm like, what? You're not ready. You have to wait. I'm like, oh, you know, so my conscious <laughs> mind is like, well, uh, I yeah, I've done that so many times. But nope, you can't go yet. I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. So I go have that other experience. I get home and tobacco says you can go in the fall because that was earlier in the year. I'm like, it would have been a lot cheaper, you know, if I just, yeah, it's it like, nope, you're not, you weren't ready. Now you're ready. You need, so I thought, <laughs> okay, tobacco. So I go on this trip, you know, it's seven days of, of drinking tobacco, as you know. Yes, I've and, done it. <laughs> and I'm aware of my mom and my brother who passed over telling me how I'm changing the relationship in our DNA, this family, to a sacred one with this plant again, instead of an unconscious one. And prior to leaving, I'd gotten a phone call from this gal in Florida, Bernadette, and who I talked to for two and a half hours, and I had to get off the phone, and she had been cold calling me to come do soul purchase at this metaphysical store there. And we just had this great conversation like soul friends out of the blue, and she found out I was going to the jungle. She became very, very curious about it. Well, when I'm in that deep state of meditation with tobacco that week, I kept feeling her. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And she like, would come and sit in front of me for healing. And I'm like, you know, this is my dieta. And, yeah. You know, but so this painting... Um, and owl medicine, I, so many things. There's a weaving of an experience of owl coming to me prior to this, of my friend energetically showing up for healings, and the plants being activated. As they said, on the seventh day, they'd be activated. I felt it. This is yes. symbolic of that. And then I became the owl shaman. But in, this, in the ceremony in the middle of our time there, I became a jaguar. And then yes. I became the nighttime. And this is... This came, I came back when I came home. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then the blue sphere in the heart is quite profound piece. It's, it's like the soul light being returned to the being, the true essence and soul light. So this has kind of become a signature piece for me. I really wanted it to be behind us. Actually, this is just to print the originals in California with one of the wolves. But uh, yeah, no, it's... It's amazing the inspiration that comes through now. And I love how Mari Posa is there as well for the transformation. And, and I like that there's a, also at the womb space, there's a healing happening for her because we are healing our wombs and our hearts as women on the, place, on the planet at this time. And I love the black jaguar. I also have had a, an experience in other plant medicine ceremony where um, you know, I asked the medicine, please show me who I am. And later in the evening, it was like completely black jaguar. <laughs> I thought, oh, maybe that's why people get a little uncomfortable when I show up because I'm saying I'm hummingbird, but actually I'm black jaguar. <laughs> it's good to just be transparent and say who you really are. So yeah, that is gorgeous, really gorgeous. And this is the kind of thing like your soul is speaking to you through this whole painting, it's all inspired. I can feel it in your artwork. It's, you you know, it's not a still life, you know? No, and that's, you know, I learned those very photographically uh, reproduced look just like, and uh, it took, it took a while for me to start. I mean, my metaphysical store where I had so much inspiration and more visionary work, I started to, it was in the field. And this is something to, 
I'd love to tell everyone to, to inspire everyone is that everything you're attracted to, there's a library of energetic information. And so when you're attracted to someone else's artwork, just imagine it is opening your field for your own journey that there's you you're relating at some deep level that speaks to your soul that is awakening your something in your own world. You know, that's what, what Alex Gray's work did for me. And Susan, there was something that said, I think I'm supposed to do something like this. I don't even know because I still was fairly mental, even though I knew I was inspired. And now it's like, I just trust my intuition in my heart. I, yeah. And it's right on. I mean, I'm telling you, like when I looked at your picture, your your portrait with white eagle and i looked it was like i've looked at other pictures since of white eagle i'm like no this is white eagle like not to discount anybody else's expression but just to say like for me that's what i felt like when i look at that picture and i look in his eyes and the kindness and that made me want to cry that is what i feel when i work with him yeah, and I, I have yeah. to say I was blessed to get to do his painting. It came through a commission, actually, of a woman who had had him show up for her and ask if I could channel him in. Yeah, he's and, just... And the, oh. I don't know if you went to read the messages on my website, but I need to make sure I send them to you. The depth of the messages with the 12 feathers, it was the reconnection to the 12 tribes, the 12 strands of DNA that had become separate at one point in our journey. And now this is about bringing that back, awakening all our gifts and our DNA in the physical and spiritual realms, bringing it all here, awakening that peace for ourselves so that we're the second coming of Christ. It's all within yeah. us. It's our awakening now. And that White Eagle is one of the ascended masters with many in the heavenly realms and the other dimensions who are supporting us, who are guiding us, who are, you know, assisting us in, in our journey of, you know, mentoring us to wake up. Yeah. And that's exactly like resonant with the messages that I channeled through the written word into the book that I was guided to write this spring that I didn't even know I was writing a book until February. It's like, Oh, you're going to write this book. Oh, really? What's it about? The second wave? What's that? You know, <laughs> like all of this stuff. I don't know what that is. And I went and looked it up. Oh, I kind of vaguely remember this from something I crossed over with Dolores Cannon's work and things like that. So I, um, what you just said and everything, I did read that the page on White Eagle talks about it in depth and it is exactly what the message is coming through the book. It's like you are on your own sacred journey. This is you having your sacred journey, your conversation with the divine one-to-one. -one. It's your journey. There's no, no, no one else like you. You're a unique thumbprint. And if we can just embrace that, then we can celebrate the diversity of the great spirit. We can celebrate how, how this amazing consciousness can create every single one of us to be completely unique and interdependent, not codependent, but interdependent to facilitate each other in having our awakenings. Like, and it's all orchestrated and connected and it's beautiful. And, and all we have to do is really like go along for the ride, you know, and stop judging it. Just stop comparing and stop judging and just celebrate. Absolutely. Yeah. So awesome. Well, I am so celebrating you, Catherine. I, you know, I really inspired by you and the work that you've done and your journey and the ins and the outs and the ups and the downs and how all through all of it, you know, you've just woven beauty through your life. And it's, mm. it's a beautiful thing to witness. And I just want to honor you in that. Oh, thank you, Carrie. Really, thank really. It's an honor to be here. You know, it really is. Really grateful to have your connection and to have you in tribe and it's uh, such a beautiful thing. So if um, the rest of you out there are were inspired by anything in this conversation, um, creativity, wanting to unleash your own creativity or wanting to, you know, find your own unique path or anything like that. You know, this is your chance. There's so many avenues to explore. And we're going to put um, Catherine's uh, website into the 
show notes so you'll be able to click through and go check out there's altar cards and there's prints and there's the tarot card deck and there's so much goodness and she does intuitive readings and you'll just have to go look on the website because there's a lot of things there <laughs> there's like a ton of ways to connect with Catherine and uh, and please 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 share this out with anybody that you uh, think would really be inspired by the content of our show today to reach deep within and look deep within for that that special gift that wants to emerge from within them too because that's what we're here to do so anything else you want to add or any other points of connection you want to offer people anything i missed ah, i think that's a good good place i feel full and and i feel grateful and uh, connect on facebook if you want and uh yeah visit me at my website oh i'll tell you one thing i learned uh from Jose and Lena that I want to honor them for was the container of the website, the container of any of my materials, my artwork, the artwork is created as a portal. That's something that I was aware when I began to create uh, all the goddesses is that it was opening doorways and portals for people actually going back further than that. But also when I created the website, any materials that are offered, the intention and the rule is that everyone gets a healing. If you're just going to look around and all that and enjoy, touch base, get inspired, imagine each piece of artwork you connect to is sending you light, is sending you a message, is sending you love, is sending you healing, is gratitude, reciprocity, and that the, the container of the website and all that just in and of itself is created also as a portal for healing, that everything is given that everything is given. And I want to say that each one of our responsibility is to just give the love that is within us and it will return far beyond anything we, we can imagine. We need each of us right now. We need to wake up and be grateful that we have a life to play in. And what love can we see in another person that is actually what we give ourselves because we were willing to say yes to a kindness. And that's what I like to say right now. Oh, it just opened my heart so big. And and I'm glad that you recognize Jose and Lena in that because I have found more joy and more love in my heart since joining the power path that I've probably had up until that point. And um, it just keeps growing, you know, the love within me. And I really believe it's the container. You know, I think we've learned a lot about containers and I love that you made your website a container that provides healing and each artwork a container that provides healing. And now I'm thinking in new ways about my website and all these things are happening in my brain. And so I'm going to go do it. <laughs> so yeah, all so of it be a container of love. rules for your website. What does it do? Yes. Now, I'm going to do that. Just what you think a website does is like spiritually, what does it do? What's it doing energetically? And what's it doing spiritually? Yes. Yeah. And I, people have, have asked how I'm successful. And I, I'm like, at the core, it's spiritual marketing. It's living as best as I can spiritually to uh, align with truth and love. And yeah, money exchanges hands in many places for this, that, or the other thing in the physical dimension, you know, but in the long run, generosity. Caring, kindness, presence, beauty, they're what make it all happen. And the more I put my attention on caring, kindness, and beauty, caring about another, the bigger it gets. And that, that money just shows up. I don't even think about it. It just, it just comes in for different things. If I'm in service and I'm taking care of myself, but I'm also caring deeply about others. It's kind of amazing how that works. We are stepping out of the greed model. Yes. We're stepping out of the patriarchal greed, got to have more at the top model, and moving back to a tribal, refining our way, as strange as it looks out there, of how we come back to care about everyone, regardless of their color, their gender, their affluence or lack thereof. It, it doesn't matter. We're one people. And this is the time for us to step up and to act that out to be in our hearts with it, and to make our choices accordingly. Absolutely. Um, when I was on my plant medicine journey, like I said, with, and White Eagle came through, one of the really strong messages that he gave my heart was love 
every one. Absolutely. Every one. And I thought, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's time that we dissolve the things that we think separate us, the judgments. And it's not easy sometimes. She could be that driver who cut you off and you're pissed at him. Yeah. You know, so, but it's, it's a cleansing. We're in a cleansing of our heart spaces so we can come home to ourselves. So we can come home and be peaceful again. And so we can receive all the beautiful things that are on the other side of that coming home. And, you know, I often tell people like when you're about to cross the threshold into your spiritual journey, like your real journey, walking the beauty way journey, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that come up that make you feel like, oh, gosh, you're going to be hard, or I don't, oh, don't want to do it. You know, there's a lot of resistance. I want to roll back over on my bed and go back to sleep. There's a lot of those things that happen. And it's just clutching to the known. And the known hasn't been all that amazing so far, probably, if you're at the beginning of your journey, right? The known has been a little bit of pain and suffering and this identification with suffering. And so we've got to move now into joy, you know, and actually that was the first transmission for the pulse for the second wave was joy. I thought, I said, why do you go, we're going to go all the way to joy. And he's like, yeah, we've got to show him where they're going for, you know, <laughs> like, okay, we're going yeah. all the way to joy. <laughs> so it's an interesting thing to figure out, you know, to really contemplate within yourself. What's my relationship with joy? Absolutely. And what's it like to have more of it? And what would it be like if joy was my norm? Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. And that's a good curiosity to be pondering. I like that question. I like that question better than the one we mentioned earlier, Catherine. <laughs> okay, good. Let's leave people with that one. Okay. What, would, what would it be like if my, if my norm was joy? Yeah contemplate that people please contemplate that question forget about the other ones and uh i'm gonna give you kisses now so don't forget before before we go please leave a review please share out the broadcast and share with anybody you think might help and if you leave a review or a rating on itunes it just helps more people find the show and we appreciate you and here comes the kisses you ready to share i always give people kisses here they come Mwah. I love you guys. I love awesome. you, Catherine. I love you too, Carrie. We'll see you next time on Soul Nectar Show. Okay.